Your dungeon heart is in danger, Master. If it's destroyed, then you will lose all of your power in this area. Pay attention to the dungeon heart, Master. That would be the end of us. It's a good way to start. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Pyro Falcon's Let's Play Extravaganza, where it's your Let's Play 2. Today, we are continuing Dungeons Steam Special Edition. I was complaining at the end of the last episode what I dislike about this game, um, and that is not to be cynical or uh, whatever. I don't slam games. I am not a screamer, as you know, if you have seen me for any length of time. But I also am not one to blow sunshine up games' butts, That uh, especially parts I don't like. Even my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy VI, has issues that I've called out just because it's not perfect. No game is perfect. So, that said, I do enjoy dungeons. I just don't always actively enjoy it. I don't play it constantly, and it's not a game that's on my mind all day, every day. Why is this not under my control? Yeah, this one's not under my control. What the heck? The bats should be within range of it, you would think. Well, let's move the bats a little closer then. There, that's as close as I can do it. That, come on, build it, build it, build it, build it. So, we are doing fine-ish. Uh, our mission in this particular dungeon is to try to find the seeds of discord, which I actually don't remember where those are. Wait until your goblin has refilled the treasure. Right. Now I can open this gate, I believe. Oh, he has to refill that treasure, probably. And once again, forgive me for sniffing into the microphone or around the microphone. I'm ha having allergy problems. It is late August, and therefore I'm uh, suffering seasonal allergies, as I do every year. And it sucks, but it is what it is. My heart should be heal by itself I think. Maybe it doesn't. It's not healing now. Can't I heal it somehow? Oh yeah, here we go. A hero has no, that's raised goblin by, limit. Um, well, escaping, yes, I know. Let's increase our goblin limit. Because the more goblins we have, the faster things get done. Um, I said at the end of the last episode no, that one of the things master. that one of drives me nuts about this game is that there are challenges, which are basically like achievements, but when you do them, you get things in the game. You get stronger, you get faster, you get more stuff to build. And some challenges are mutually exclusive, and that system drives me up a freaking wall. I hate mutually exclusive goals. It drives me nuts as a gamer. Maybe I'm complaining too much about it, but it is what it is. I just don't like it, and uh, I, I really don't like it in this game, because it, it it encourages you to play games mul uh, levels multiple times and experiment, which I get, but it doesn't make it clear that it, that's what you're supposed to do. I think that's my thing. It, it's not... One of the things that drives me nuts in games is lack of feedback, and I believe that that is what drove me the most nuts in this one, that you don't really know what's going on and what you need to do at any given time. Um, you do, and you learn to figure it out, but especially when you're distracted with the Zombie King's skeletons and all that nonsense, there's just, I don't know, there's just so much to do and not in a good way. Too many moving parts in this game. I promise I'm gonna try to stop bitching, because I really like this game and I'm always trying to give it more of a real shot. So, all right, I think I can convert that. But I have to wipe these skeletons out first, which they just got wiped out, cool. All right, so we are going to convert. What the heck? Where, where am I? Oh, there I am, jeez. Okay, come over here. There we go. And now convert... Oh, I, I guess I need to kill these guys first before I even try to convert that pentagram. But I need a free pentagram. That would be nice. Go, my little me dungeon leader. Go. 
So yeah, I even remember reading the reviews of this game at the time, and it had a lot of the same complaints I came to independently. Not even about the pace of the game, but more of how it's sort of this weird fit, because it doesn't exactly appeal to people who are used to Dungeon Keepers, because they changed a lot, but it also doesn't really appeal to new people of the genre, because they don't really know what's going on, and it's just this weird... It's a really weird dichotomy, and I don't know. It is what it is. Again, whatever. Maybe maybe it's fine. Um, all I know is I need to keep working on this dungeon. I do remember the first time I played it, I really didn't know what was going on, and the second time I played it, I did a lot better, and I didn't read a guide or anything. I was just more patient and tried to, to understand what I was monster. looking at. I have the feeling that we need to bring all of the monsters in the area under our control before we can carry on here. Try and bring all of the monster shelters in the area under your control. Now that I can do, sir. Oh, Ooh, maybe I already master, did it. Look, this chest must hold the seeds of discord. Open the chest and take the artifact. You got it, buddy. All right, so so there's the chest, there's the gate. The gate is open now, because yes, I did. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. I've already got all the monster shelters under my control. Um, the other thing I do now with this game is that I don't really care about like this. The heroes are leaving, which is bad because they've got all my treasure. But since we're right here at the end of the game, at the end of the level where I just need to grab this and we're done, then I'm just going to, you know, grab it and get the hell out. Excellent. With the seeds of discord, we can well, sow a little discord. <laughs> I could almost burst with anticipation when I think of those fat halflings flailing away at one another with their thick little fingers. Yeah. Right. Challenge met low on Oh, yeah, there we go, victory. So we have all of our challenges here, and I'm going to let our Mr. Sidekick give you the story real quick. Well, I run and grab nasal spray. Behind the scenes action. Nobody there is in the mood for song and celebration anymore. Where once you heard laughter, you now hear shouts of rage. Talk about music to your ears. And you've gained a little power in the process. I can feel the day of your revenge coming closer already. And I came back just in time for the voicing to be done. So here are all the challenges. As I said, we're going to... We get, like, good stuff for this, like attribute points and more attribute points, even more attribute points. Like, we, we've got tons of attribute points, man. You have to do these challenges... The mere mention of Shutting up again. There's a lot of voicing in this game. Oh, and let me know in the comments below if there's too much voicing. If you want me to just skip all this and get to the gameplay, let me know. I tend to default to letting you guys read and experience the story. So, I'm gonna shut up now. Which you exact your terrible revenge on that traitor, Calypso. It would be so simple, but there's just one problem. A good-hearted magician named Magnus Pollen Picker. This self-appointed champion of good protects the region from dastardly evil characters. People like us, Master. I'd recommend that you deal with this paltry little problem personally. It would be best if we dug our way into the cellar of his manor and lured him down there. The next bit should be pretty obvious. <laughs> right. One of the challenges that I do find amusing is do the obvious, which is always doing the story mode. So it is what it is. Um, so all of these challenges are um, able to be done, but some of them, again, are self, um, self-exclusionary. Mutually exclusive, that's what I want. So like Loner, never have more than five goblins. But then... Never have more than three goblins. But then there's also, like... I think there's one that's, like... Have more goblins? I don't know. It's dumb. It is what it is. But, again, we can just go back to the last stage. 
and we can see what we've done and what we haven't done. So I could redo this mission and do Vulture, do Spendthrift, do Hero Killer. Um, chest horse nightmare. Destroy the magic chest. I don't even know what that is, but anywho. Um, I don't know. And the UI is kind of weird because you don't really, like, you don't see where the order of the stages are. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm probably bitching too much. I apologize. Trying to have fun with dungeons. So, we are going to have fun with dungeons. Uh, like I said, I do not hate this game. I just... I'm very nitpicky about it, and I'm not sure why. It could be one of those situations where I know it could have been better, and it's just a lot of little nitpicks, but they've added up into a bit of an annoyance. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find that goody two-shoes Magnus Pollen Picker Cellar. As you may recall, He's the poor, good-natured magician we want to do away with. <laughs> Master, as luck would have it, there are a number of underground guard posts in the area. I'm sure the use of a little excessive force could persuade them to spit out the information. <laughs> Maybe along with a few teeth. Hmm? Master, fun, fun. you can now build some things yourself, such as pentagrams and piles of treasure. I recommend that you create a couple of vampire bat pentagrams, as they provide you a great deal of visibility. Then you should set up some treasure piles to motivate the heroes. In addition, you can now also place prestige gimmicks, Master. Just try it out and place one of them. You know that prestige makes you stronger. It also provides you with new options for construction. Now, this is where the game really starts to open up, and this is where I started realizing how fun it can be and where some strategy is. So, because we can now place treasure and basically everything in the game, it's important to know how to arrange the treasures because that is actually important for the game. That's important for your strategy. So, as you saw with the previous episode, heroes will try to get all the treasure and then get out but they keep going um treasure to treasure like you can lead them a certain direction and that's what i do enjoy with the game so for example here we have our first dungeon entrance it's closed right now but heroes will eventually come out so we just put a bunch of treasure here then they're going to pop out get the treasure and then just get out that was the problem with the first mission so this time, we're going to be a little smarter th about it. The first thing we're going to do... No, never mind. We're going to put a teeny tiny pile of treasure. Eh, how do I rotate? Is it... Oh, that's how to do it. All right. I don't want to put it there. Um, let us... Let's see. I want to get them... So... Heroes don't have really advanced AI, but they do look around for things they want. So, if they go this way, there's nothing but a dead end there. So, we are going to put a tiny pile of treasure right here at this, uh, T way. I'm being too exacting about this. So, tiny pile of treasure. So, then they're going to get that, and then they're going to look around. A tiny pile of treasure will not satisfy them, so they're going to want to look elsewhere. So, then we're going to put another pile of treasure here. Come on. And then they're still going to look around because that won't uh, they won't be happy with that. And here's another entrance and they'll come this way and want to look for things. So we're going to put a treasure kind of in the corner here. And then we're going to put one last treasure here. And this is the one that's most important because if we put a treasure here, then it leads them to the center room where I can easily find them. So they may be satisfied with the treasure by the time they get here. Now, they could see my dungeon heart, in which case they will go attack it, or if they are fully satisfied at this point, they will try to leave. But, they will have a few options and they're going to have to go a fair bit of distance to get out of the dungeon after they have uh, grabbed all their treasure. So, because of that, we have plenty of room and time for us to go slaughter the heroes. There is some strategy involved. So now that I've set up my little line of treasure, we're gonna pop open this uh, 
hero entrance, and we will pop open this one. Although for this one, I need to expand my and influence, and I don't have the money to do so. Open. Well, that's okay. We can work on the main objective then, while we wait. So, the main objective, one of them is we need to question these three dudes about where the uh, magician is. So, we're going to cut open a hole. We're going to go talk to them. And once heroes start coming in, and I slow... Ooh, three minutes. Man, that's a long time. Once a hero comes in and I slaughter him, we'll have enough money that we can start pushing our influence more outward. And again... Lots of waiting. What's going on over here? This stairway leads down to your current boss. Oh, goody. Oh, zombie king. Oh, oh, while we're doing things, shoot, we can... Yeah, we have six freaking attribute points. Let's pull up magic missile, because I love it. Um, converting uh -oh, pentagram... We're Whoa. under attack. I think this is the time for a strategic withdrawal. I think this is good voice acting. I am going to run into here and turn the lever. I am now turning the lever. I have turned the lever. Alright. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I get it. Oh, okay. I can't close that. Yes, yes, thank you, game. Jeez. Okay, anyway. So, build improvement combat. Ooh, is that a poison? Poison arrow. This skill unlocks the first... Ooh, I love dots. I love dots so much. Uh, defense. Um, right. It doesn't... I like building. It doesn't really matter. Berserker Rage. This spell lets you enter a Berserker Orc Rage. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Why am I doing this? Improved attack. There. That's better than... Done. 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 Okay. So, we are going to go deal with this nonsense. These guys are just going to hang out, because they have nothing better to do. Um, minute and a half left on that. And I still don't have any money. I guess I overbuilt cash. I should have thought ahead a little bit and not have made so many. Let's destroy this one. And then we will put it... We'll put a... Uh, bat pentagram. Why can't I... Oh, I need prestige. Alright, so again, see... So I mass over it, and you can see there I need 10 prestige points, which is here, and in order to get prestige I have to build objects. In order to do that I need soul energy. Everything needs something, and it's a little obnoxious. And so prestige objects are literally just decorations. They do nothing. Excellent work, Master. Keep building prestige gimmicks to increase your power. It's nice. It's kind of a cool idea that you can decorate your dungeon however you want to. It's just kind of pointless. So, like, and for me, I'm not really artistic about it, um, just because I just sort of want to get it over with. So, even this, I'm, like, caring more about, like, lining up my chairs. Because they can't, they, they can't be destroyed, so none of this really matters. Um, the only thing that I do like is, like, there, the candles, like, being able to light up your dungeon in spots. That's kind of nice. Um, okay, so I have 21 uh, prestige, so now I can build a... Oh, hero's arriving. I can build a bat here, and I'm trying to expand my influence so I can open this up and get Look, more heroes master, coming in. There are two heroes talking about your dungeon. You should keep a sharp eye on that kind of thing. For if a hero is in a bad mood, he can quickly pass it on to others around him. Ill-tempered heroes are generally no longer impressed by your dungeon, but rather want to destroy your beloved dungeon heart instead. You may end up having to cut that kind of troublemaker out of the herd and eliminate them. And since we need money Some anyway, that's not a bad idea. Strange needs. This hero admits his masochistic urges, which are satisfied when he takes damage from monsters during combat. Right. This is also where heroes start needing additional things. So if we left-click, we see this guy needs 67 points of treasure, 
and 49 pit points of damage. Um, so we need to have this balance where we're challenging him but not killing him if I want to maximize the soul energy, which I do not. These guys I want to take I down now so I can get some cash. A hero is admiring one of your prestige gimmicks. It's certainly interesting to see how heroes like to go from one prestige gimmick to the next to admire them. You can use this information to influence how heroes move through your dungeon. I forgot about that. I forgot that they cared about your prestige gimmicks and not just your uh, treasure. Well, anyway, I'm going to slaughter these guys and then we're going to continue on with what we... Oh my god, I'm actually getting my ass kicked. Attack, dude! There's a way I can go into third person mode. And, like, get to floor level. I mean, I'm already in third person mode, but, like, not this big overworld. More of an over-the-shoulder view. I forget how to do it. I might actually be able to do it now. And doing so allows me to uh, have more power, more attack power. But anyway, I slaughtered those heroes now just to get some cash. So now we've got 124. We're going to plop some skeleton warriors right here to greet those, uh, greet those heroes. Actually, I've changed my mind. We are not going to do that. We are going to... God damn it, that was a lot of money I just wasted. We're going to put it here. Because... Actually, we'll put it here. That way I can expand my influence this direction, too. Anywho, that will do it for this one. And we are going to finish dealing with these guys over here. And uh, inquire where the super magician guy is in the next episode thank you all very much for watching and i will see you tomorrow for another episode yay dungeons